Te whanau. So we had a bit of technical difficulties, but we're here now. Um, he mihi nui tai ore ore atu ana kia koutou katoa e ma taki taki mai na i tēnei wā. Uh, no piki mai, no kake mai ki taku kauta, uh, ki tō mātou whare, uh, nō reira ki te tunu uh, kai. Uh, ngā mihi nui nui kia koutou katoa, uh, ko ai tēnei, he uri tēnei o, o, o ngā tirangi nui, o ngā tirangi, o ngā tipawa. Ko ku mara e kei roto o, o tauranga moana, a ko huria, tēnei mara ki taku taha, a ko wairoa me, me hangarau. Nō reira, kanu iaku mihi kia koutou katoa. Um, yep, welcome. So we had a bit of technical difficulties, but hopefully we can um, start a watch party here. Um, it seems Facebook's not liking Zoom at the moment, so they're having a bit of a whawhai. Anyway, so a few things we're going to go through today. This will be about a half an hour long, so we're going to make a, an Italian seafood pasta. Ala Charlie, um, and uh, a few little tips around cooking. So I just want to start off with knifing because we've oh, just first of all I just want to be, have a huge mihi out to all those who are sending out videos of cooking. It's wicked, ngaiterangi, awesome job, um, and everyone else who's doing a uh, um, doing doing these as well. So thanks to Te Runga Ngati Ranginui um, for allowing this this platform to happen, um, as well as TBK. For, for giving me the resources to, to enable me to go live from home. So, um, nō reira, kia, kia hutu katoa, ka nui aku mihi. Uh, so, knifing. So, watching a lot of the videos and, and sort of sitting there going, ooh, they're going to cut themselves soon. So, I just want to give some little tips about knives and, and how to use them. So, that's where we'll start with a couple of knifing skills. So, just, these are the knives we're going to use today. So, these are chef's knives. Okay, so just have a look at the shape of that. So these are for cutting when you're cooking, all right? So vegetables, um, dicing meat or things like that, use these. Here's a butcher knife and a fillet, uh, fillet knife. These are not for cutting, not for cutting vegetables, all right? So there's not much control that you can have on these when you've got them bouncing off, uh, off a chopping board and you're probably gonna cut yourself um, easier than you would with the chef's knives. So put Excalibur and the, the sword from the Lord of the Rings away. Don't use these for cutting vegetables. And the last two are these paring knives. Okay. So these are our paring knives. Um, this one is a serrated paring knife and a normal paring knife. These are good for peeling, peeling fruit, peeling vegetables, Subway. They use these ones when they cut the bread. Um, and they're also good for cutting, all right? So you can use these ones for cutting. Just a little tip around sharpening knives. So the, the, the key is the sharper the knife, the, the better it is and you won't get cut. So when you've got a blunt knife, working with a blunt knife, you tend to put more force on it. And if you slip, boom, cut your finger. All right, so just be careful with that. So keep your knives sharp. Um, you can use any sharpener. So I've got these all different types of knife sharpeners and, and a lot of our whanau think that when you're sharpening a knife you're trying to scrape the steel off. All right, you're not. That's not what you're trying to do when you sharpen a knife. What you're trying to do is when chef knives, um, especially when the knives go blunt, um, it's because the, the straight, so the straight part of the knife sort of curves over like that. So the point of, of using your steel or whatever you're using ceramic or with your knife is that you just want to straighten it back up again. So don't go handy like that, you know, like you're a ninja and wanting to take over the world. So it's just a few short, long strokes just to get that knife back straight again. And you can tell when it's straight because it just run it across your thumb and it should peel. Okay. The other thing is if you're doing muscles on that, don't use these knives for muscles. Use a blunt knife because that's a huge risk. If you slip on the shell, then you cut your hand. And I've done that a couple of times. Alright, so we'll get into some knife techniques just before we start cooking. So some of the knife techniques will come around here. We'll start off with our ginger. If we're using ginger today, I'll just grab all the stuff we're cutting. So when we're cutting things like ginger or carrots is another one if you're doing some julienne, um, you've got to make a base. So if it rolls around like that, it's dangerous, okay? So you just do a quick slice and make a base so it can sit. Save that one. And then we're just going straight down, nice and thin. Oops, one went on the floor. Um, nice and thin like that. 
Okay, so we're doing these, um, these small dices for our cooking today because you don't want a big chunk of ginger in your mouth while you're eating. And the um, small dices, um, it's, it's got a flash French name, Petit D or something like that, but we just call them small dices. All right. So I'll, I'll show you this technique when we do the spring onions, but that's, you use the flat part of your fingers to guide the knife. All right. So if you're doing that, so tuck your fingernails under. So I see people doing like this, and it's like, ooh, 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 don't do that. Um, tuck your fingernails under and use that flat pass to bounce your knife off, just like that. Okay. So Kirsty just steps out for a minute. So just get the whole thing. So what I can do is if I'm if I'm tucking my fingers under and using the flat part of the knife, I can talk to you while I'm cutting, and I won't get cut. All right. So that's a nice, and then let your knife bounce, don't take the top. For things like this that are nice and low, don't take them off the chopping board and just keep, see I can look at you while I'm dicing. As I say with onions, you can look away, look away while you're dicing it. So we're just doing our ginger for today's dish. Again, tuck your fingers under. Oop, got some rogue ones there. And that's big enough. That's big enough for the for the dish we're going to make today. So I'll just put those to the side. I'm not going to use those ones. I'll just grab something to put that in. You go this so that's going to go in with um, with the onion. So we'll do the onion next. Spring onions today. So half we're using in the cooking and half we're using in the pasta. So. We'll chop the greens off, keep them at the top. <clears throat> Again, just hold them. So this is called a pivot, it means just bunching everything together, okay? So this is just a pivot cut. And then we're just going to bounce it off your hands again. So just go, take it slow. And then this way you can control the size of the cuts as well, so that they're consistent and they'll all cook at the same time. So pivot means just to pull it all together and hold it down with your fingers so it's nice and tight. Okay, that's going to get cooked with the ginger. So I'll just chuck that in there. I'm using all the same board because they're all veggies and they're all going in the same dish. But again, if you're using cooking things like chicken, then use different boards, different coloured boards for different things. Um, normally you'd put a little tea towel underneath, but these have got grips, so they're fine. Alright, now cutting our greens. So this is just going to be a little don't need too much because that's just going to be a garnish over the pasta at the end. So that's a rough chop, that one. That can go in the bowl. Now, I'll just rinse that. We've got some fresh herbs, so we've got basil. Dry basil is fine, so if you don't have any basil, dry basil is fine. I've washed it, but I didn't pick the flowers off. So, dry basil and a bit of parsley. So the leafy parsley is, is, is better, because you, we all know what a little, you know, the parsley that they use at the lotto, what that tastes like if you get it in your mouth, it's sort of like eating pickles. So, again, a pivot, holding them together. But we're going to pivot and fan this one. So just a rough cut like that. So these are going in for cooking, this one. So, and then the fan just means your knife stays at one point, the top of your knife stays at one point, and it just comes around over the veggies, uh, over the herbs. So that's the fan. So we just go. Another good example because my board's moving. Fan it across, nice small cuts. Alright, and so that's how we do that. And that's going in the cookie as well. We'll put it in a separate dish. Alright, now we'll leave those there. We're all ready to go for our cookie. So, 
couple of other tips in terms of pan. So we've got a non-stick pan, I've got a wok here, it's, it is non-stick, and then our pot. So if we're doing a pasta dish like this, or any dish, and you're using a couple of pots, the pot with the water, or hot water in, goes at the back. For obvious reasons, if you have it at the front, you have to reach over and you'll probably get burnt, or if you've got kids and they come along and pull it, then it's, it's dangerous. So the pot with the water, always at the back. Um, the lids, turn them to the side when you're cooking. So, with the non-stick pan, um, yeah, put this one on the edge because it's got a plastic handle and it's burnt. Um, with the non-stick pan, okay, so the tip is for that one. <laughs> the tip is for that one. When, um, when we're heating it or when we're putting oil in it, you um, heat it, you put the oil in first. Okay, put the oil in first and then bring it to heat. Okay, so I've seen a lot of people just heat it up and then chuck the oil in. If you do that, there's two things that will happen. One, if you heat it without oil and the, 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 the non-stick stuff comes off and will go into your food, all right, and yuck. Um, the other reason is that it'll spit, all right. Because it's non-stick, it'll start spitting at you, so you'll get all that hot spit coming at you. Now this one is okay. This one's okay to be, um, to be heated before you put the oil in, all right. So when it's hot, don't use olive oil, all right, so it'll burn. It'll burn straight away, okay. But anyway, probably... Not try not to use whole olive oil too much when you're heating. So we'll start these up. This one will start up early because it needs to heat up a little bit. The recipe is going to come up soon, Fano. So just um, bear with us. You'll get the recipe. Well, you can just watch for now. All right. We'll get our pot going as well. So we need the water boiling. So that's for the pasta. This is what we're going to cook the sauce in, and this is we're going to fry the pasta off at the end in a little bit of oil, just to make it a nice flavour. Just some of the ingredients, so I wanted to use the ones in the shell, um, but I got to the supermarket a bit late last night and they were all gone. So um, I've, I've got the frozen stuff, which is probably better. So this was $5, it's 500 grams of cooked clam meat, um, and this was $5. And I kept it frozen because we'll chuck it in frozen because all the flavour and the saltiness will be in that juice that's in there. The mussels are frozen as well, um, and so that was five dollars as well. <clears throat> and then we've got the tins of tomato, two tins of, of chopped tomatoes. They were seventy cents each. Um, pasta, you don't have to buy San Remo. Um, I just buy it because yeah. But you can get um, the value pasta for you know, 70 cents. This one was $1.20. Um, and then I, I'm cheating, so I'm using garlic, um, crushed garlic, and then the salts and peppers and the oils. And like I said, we're going to use cooking oil when we're frying in heat. Um, and we'll use the olive oil for the, um, the demonstration with butter, combine it with butter. All right, so the pan's had enough time to heat. So I'm going to use steel in this pan, and plastic in that pan, or wooden spoon. So just two tablespoons, that was a guesstimate. Two tablespoons of oil, let it heat up for a little while. So the reason we let it heat up for a little while before we put the veggies in, because if we put the veggies in while it's cold, they'll stew rather than fry. So we want them to fry, and we want them to get a fright and go whoop, and then all their flavours come out. Um, and so what's going in there is the garlic, the onion, uh, the spring onion, and the ginger that we chopped, and we'll just saute that for a couple of minutes um, while our, our pot is cooking. I'll just put that lid on so that water boils a bit faster. But I will grab oh, oh, here they are. My cameraman's being bossy. Alright, so we'll um if you've got any questions, just part of my and I'll try and answer them. So we'll just put our garlic in. Can you hear that? Nice and hot. As well as our ginger and our spring onion. Right, so I'm not going to stir that, just give it a bit of a shake. Let it sit, sit for a little while um, before you start stirring. So the juices from those beautiful 
starter veggies um, will come through. Okay, so if we're doing, so if you don't like seafood, and the reason I chose seafood today is for our, our, our katorika whanau, so they can't eat any type of meat today, um, and our in-house expert, Nawa Hall, sort of told me that. So, just let that fry off for a little while. Anyway, as I was saying, if you don't like seafood, you can use chicken, but you're, the difference with that is that we put, we're going to put the seafood at the end because it doesn't take too long to cook. You've got to put the chicken in now. So let it saute for a little while. If you're using chicken, put it in now. Okay, so it gives it time to cook and then it can finish cooking inside the sauce. Okay, so you can use chicken. Um, if you like bacon, bacon is another good way to get flavour into this meal. So as I said on my post this morning, this was one of my favourite dishes um, when we were in Italy. So both times we went to Italy, we went to this little cafe restaurant thing that's um, just by the, the Pantheon and um, and ate there and, and I, I quickly learned as a seafood lover that mare is seafood in, um, in Italian and this dish is called uh, frutti de mare so it's fruits of the sea um, so we've got mussels, we've got pippies or clams and then I'm going to add in some um, prawns that I found in our freezer but you can use any seafood and the whole mussels are really nice in the shell so, same as the tuangi or, um, or pippi um, and prawns uh, to bulk it up you know if you've got a hundred kids and you need it to go a bit further bulk it up you can use surimi because that's nice and cheap you can get a whole bag of that for three dollars anyway that's um looks like it's sauteed off enough it'll keep cooking it'll keep cooking inside the sauce so we'll add our two cans of sauce in Two cans of tomato, sorry. Now a quick tip, rinse these, rinse these and recycle. So we'll just let that, and we'll let that simmer, um, give it a mix and then let it simmer for about five minutes. Right, so with Italian pastas, and I'm not an Italian pasta expert, but um, with Italian pasta dishes, um, the, the key is not too much sauce, alright? And so the star of the dish is supposed to be the pasta and the seafood, not the sauce. So it's a little bit of sauce to complement the pasta, not um, a little bit of pasta to complement the hundi sauce. And so <coughs> we'll let that cook off. And it was interesting, when we were in Italy, um, like the first time we went, we were pretty spoiled and we went to restaurants for all our meals and we soon learnt, we soon learnt that don't go, don't go hundy as I said in the first um, courses because there were like six, seven courses we had, aperavito, antipasto, primo, secondo, compreno, whatever they are. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, this is a primo, okay, so this is a first um, so you have your appetizer, then your starter, then your first course, second course, um, like that. And so this is the first course because it's light, it's not creamy, it doesn't have um, a, a huge amount of meat in it. Uh, seafood is, is considered light and it was always served with um, water, no, um, a nice white wine. So we'll just let that cook. Mm. Now, just to the pasta, so we're using spaghetti. You can use linguine, actually you can use any type of pasta. So when we're at the Pantheon, they use spaghetti, but linguine is another really nice one. And you can get that freshly made one that's nice and soft or make it yourself. Um, could have made it myself, but you know, for a dollar, you can get it already made. Uh, so the water's still boiling, coming to the boil. Have you got any questions? Okay, so just while we're waiting for this, um, whānau ma, so... Rewana is very nice accompaniment to anything saucy because you can mop it up with the bread. So what I'm going to do is I've, I've, I've um, built the bug up into two big containers, this one and another bigger one, um, and I'm keen to share the bug. So if you're coming past our house on your way to the supermarket or going to get essential things, Call in, bring your own container, 
All right, um, let me know you're coming and what I'll do is I'll pull you up some lewana bug and then we'll do another lesson about how to make lewana. And this bug was given to me by a very good friend um, and it's been mastered over a few years so there's no needing with this bug. So it's just flour, sugar, water, mix it together, put it in a pan and Bob's your uncle. So we really need that to go hard out oiling. So what I might do, don't look, I'll just remove the rack from under the wok and lower it so it just hits the heat. There you go, now it's going. Oh. I just saw a question from the bro, Jace, where do we get the oven from? I'm sure it's no. Um, so, yeah, so it's a really cool oven. Um, and it's probably how we can make so much bread in this oven. Um, so I can do four at a time. Doing funny buggers over there. Four at a time, nice big oven. Oh, don't look in there. Um, yeah, six pots going. Keep stirring that down, let it reduce a little bit more. So the point of reducing is to get the water out, so let the steam come out. You could turn that on, but it'll just be a little bit hot, uh, a little bit noisy. Um, get the steam out and leave the flavour in. So right about now is when we chuck in the, the spices. Okay, not too early, otherwise you, you can kill that. And I've only got basil and um, this sort of, uh, basil and parsley. Herbs. Mm -hmm. Oh, the herbs, sorry. You can put spice in if you want, curry. So basil and herbs, we'll save a little bit for the pasta later. Oh, basil and herbs, basil and parsley. And just, oh, you can smell that already. If we had smell of vision you'd be, um... Mm -hmm. So it's really simple, it's just to, you know, it just takes a bit of time. Um, and you know, they always say, the Italian nonnas and uh, nonnies, they always say that um, the ingredients are 50% of the dish, the other 50% is love. Okay. And my nan used to always say that 50% um, of what you, of how you eat is with your eyes, so we've got to make it look pretty as well. Um, and just on that, you know, inspiration to cooking, someone asked me, um, you know, how do I start cooking? So I'm, I'm a natural tutu, you know, Jack Nui. Um, and so when I was young, I used to always watch mum and nan at the Marae, uh, and then just talk, learnt with them, and um, taught myself, um, watched other people, had some inspirational people uh, to cook with, Mary Ann Paki was one of them. Um, <coughs> yeah, mum, nan, my bro Stace, uh, now Stace is the chef, I'm not the chef, Stace is the chef, uh, and Modia is another one, you know, another emerging talent uh, in terms of cooking. And, and a lot, all of those people um, basically got their grounding at the mine. And so that's, I think that's important, you know, I always harp on about that, that um, so, well, this is in the lean salt. Sea salt um, for pasta is the best because you want that saltiness to go through the pasta. Uh, like I said, you can use fresh basil or dried basil. I was only lucky I went over next door and um, robbed the herb garden and got the parsley and basil, so thanks, Uh Salt and pepper. So now's the time to put in the seasoning. You don't need too much salt because you've got seafood going in, and that's like I said, we've got the juices it's frozen, so just a sprinkle of that, and Italians don't use much of it. So again, while we were in Italy, in Italy, Italy yeah. while we were in Italy, um, you know, we, we went there with, with a kamahaka two times, and, you know, big bulky Maldives, and a lot of the places we went to was a little bit of meat and a lot of pasta. And so um, cracking up with one of the bros this morning that when we were at the Pantheon, we sat at the, the cafe. Most of the group went to McDonald's and they're like, oh, you can get McDonald's when we get home. But people were craving meat. Okay, our pasta pot is boiling. So I'm just gonna chuck all of this in. Oh, maybe not. 
half of that in. And be generous with the salt. Okay, don't be stingy with the salt in here. And just let that form. Give it a bit of a stir so it doesn't stick together. It doesn't matter how much water you've got in here because you're going to tip it out anyway. But some people save it. I don't know what for, but they save it. And just speaking of while when the first time we went to Italy, when we arrived, um, it was in the evening. And so we're not going to put a pot on the the um, part, a lid, sorry, on the pasta. But what you can do, like. Sometimes it boils over if you know pasta potatoes. Uh, instead of putting a lid on, just turn your thing on up, upstairs and um, a wooden spoon over the top. So that, that sort of eases the pressure on the boil. But I couldn't find any wooden spoons in our house, so I've just got a wooden stick and then just sit it on the top and that stops it from boiling over. So you won't hear the noise and get all the paru stove afterwards. Um, so we'll put that on top. That's still bubbling away beautifully. So six to eight minutes on the pasta. What we're going to do now, so that's enough in there. You can reduce it more if you like. If you forget and you burn it or it goes a little bit dry, all you need to do is put a half a cup of water in and then let it reduce again, okay? So it won't affect it. So you can see the nice, and all that ginger in it should be nice and soft. So another, another sort of key point while you're cooking is to taste as you go. But when you taste, Um, when you taste, tuck that spoon away or wash it, don't double dip. Okay, so it's nice as it is, but it still needs a little bit more salt and a bit more flavour. And that's where the seafood comes in. So we'll put our seafood in now and it's nice and frozen, so it's going to slow down the cooking process as well. So the reason I'm using them frozen, so if, they, if we had fresh mussels and um, chuangi, you know, you can put them in and then the juices come out of them. If we defrosted these then it gets a bit tasteless so I'm just putting them in frozen so that's one of the reasons the other reason is um, I wash my hands by the way the other reason is that um, it'll slow down the cooking process and then it, they won't overcook so mussels in first so these are a little bit smaller um, so we'll leave those to go in a little bit later so you want them all to be cooking like with, with a bit of consistency, not too, so that the mussels will cook slower than those. And just put a lid on it, let it cook. It's not actually the lid for that, can't find the lid. And just get all the rest ready. So the pasta's bubbling away quite good there. It's been about four minutes, I think. So prawns as well. Prawns, you, they can go in at the last minute as well. They only need a minute or two. Um, and they'll keep cooking in the heat of the sauce. So we'll get the mussels. Mussels can have a little bit of a head start. All right. They still feel a little bit hard, so we'll just let them go for a little bit longer. So like I said, if you want to bulk it up for your whanau, so this will feed about six people. Yes, six whanaus. Um, six people, uh, but if you want to feed more, just bulk it up, like add another two cans or put surimi or crab meat because you can get those cool little packets for two dollars. Now, like this, like these, you can get those for two dollars at the supermarket. So, yeah, that's really cool. Okay. Keep the pasta going. Any more questions? So we want the pasta, probably eight minutes in al, de, al, al dente. So it's a little bit, still a little bit hard because we're going to fry it off in a bit of oil and butter. Can you freeze this dish? Or, 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 you know, honestly, I've never had leftovers in <laughs> Leftovers to freeze. So I tested it the other day and shared it with, um, in our bubble, no, shared it with my mum and dad and um, Kirsty's mum and dad as well. And, um, yeah, so this one there's hard, never really anything left. But I suppose you can try. 
it's probably like a sink, you know, where you can freeze it and um, and, and reheat it. The only sort of caution I'd, I'd give is around the seafood, um, refreezing the seafood. So if you're using fresh seafood, then yeah, by all means do it. It's just if they're not fresh. So we'll put the um, little, they've got clams on here, so put baby clam. Must be too ugly. Although when I lived in the Waikato, they used to call the uh, like raglan, the, the, the flat ones, the pit, um, the kokota and the round ones, the pippi, so each to their own. And then I might put the prawns, just sprinkle them over the top. And then we'll just let that simmer now. So we'll turn the heat down and let it simmer. Um, and let them cook themselves in the hot sauce and the juices and then come back to the pasta. So I'm just going to test the pasta. So it means if you can snap it easily by that, so probably another minute. So just the, the key with the herbs is nice and subtle, subtle herbs, so probably stay away from the oregano's um, or oregano, no. oregano is good, um, rosemary is probably too strong, thyme is probably too strong and too hard, um, so just stay away from some of the pungent herbs and use the subtle ones like the basils, like the oregano, parsley, um, yeah. Like I said, if you want to have chicken, you can, and you can chuck olives in or whatever you want into it just to, um, to beef it up. Right, so I'm going to drain the pasta. I'll just be gone for a minute, so that's pretty much done. Colander. A lot of people say bowl with holes. A colander. drain that pasta, let it drain for a little while and we'll start this one. So this is going to be the um, a little bit of a sauce to go with the pasta. So we'll chuck the butter in, we'll turn that on. So as I said with these non-stick pans try and put the, um, the oils in straight away um, while it's heating. And a little bit of olive oil. So what we want to do with this is mix the butter in olive oil and get an amber sort of look from it and then once it's heated we're going to add the last of our herb and onion um, spring onion mix so the greens from our spring onion and the herbs can go into this so we'll just let that fry off and melt Our pasta's still chugging away over there. Can you see the sauce coming through? So that added frozen, like the defrosting of the, the seafood in there has added a little bit more sauce, so that's all right. But we'll just keep the lid on for a little bit longer. Now we're melting. So it's a mix of olive oil and butter. So the butter's probably the most unhealthy thing in this dish, apart from the pasta, if you're not into carbs. While that's doing it, I'll just check in the So I just saw a comment on here. So when I was working at the Runanga, and Ohan bought me this, by the way, it's a sharpener. Um, when I was working at the Runanga, uh, Trina, Trina was working there too and she um, cooked the kumbara in one of the microwaves and blew it up. A uh, bit of an explosion. I think you evacuated the whole block, didn't you Trina? So we'll just chuck those onions in and cook them through a little bit. 
like I said before, there's nothing worse than getting a chunk of raw. So this is basically just to stop the pasta sticking together and just to add a little bit of flavour to the pasta as well because yeah, it can be a little bit dry. So just fold it through. So I'm watching the man do this in, um, in Italy in one of the restaurants when he was um, doing our pasta. Being a jack -nui. Some say stealing ideas. So just turn that down. So that's pretty much cooked. Now, the prawns uh, are still need a little bit more cooking, but that won't take long. They will cook. So just to serve it up, I'll just grab, I'll just clean this off. So we're just yeah, putting the pasta on the bottom. And then we'll grab some of this. So it's, you know, chowder is probably my, my favorite seafood dish. Um, but this is a good alternative if you're looking for a healthy option and you still want to have seafood, so just plonk that on the top. And we'll just grit some more parsley. Just for a bit of garnish on top. You can salt it if you want, but um, add some real one. So you can butter it or olive oil, toast it, but just some a bit of real, oops, a little bit of real one around it, and then finish off with a bit of sauce on the bottom. Okay, so if you want to do this as an adult dish. You can chuck some red wine in at the onion stage and that, that adds another um, very nice flavour to it as well. Oh, red wine, white wine, sorry, any type of white wine. So, that's our seafood pasta. Um, again, again, if you want to put some white wine into it at this, the onion, when we put the onions in, do the white wine there and let it reduce and let the alcohol go out. But, um, yep, seafood pasta, a la Charlie. <laughs> Don't forget if you want some lewana, um, call in if you're on your way to the supermarket for essential services. Call in with your container, I'll give you a container and then give you a couple of days to build your own bug up and then we'll have a lesson on how to cook that lewana. Um, 
ko te tūmanako ka noho haumaru koutou i roto i hoto me kāinga a mihi kauana ki a koutou a e te whānau, e paniana, e pauriana i tēnei wā nō reira kia kaha tātou, kia kaha tātou and again thank you te runa o Ngā Tirangi Nui for allowing this platform to happen and for TPK for helping allowing me to use the technology to connect with you all. Nō reira, kia hoto katoa, tēnā koutou, and if I didn't answer your question on here, I'll try and answer it on the thread. Nō reira, ngā mihi kia koutou.